Hey everybody, this is Sam with the Overtime Network, and this is the Pro Wrestling Overtime Show. So, we are doing this via live stream on Podbean, and you're going to hear me talking about that a little more in the future and talking about the joint venture that we're going to be doing there. But for those of you who are listening to this on the Pro Wrestling Overtime Network, your this stream where you are listening, it's unknown at this time whether or not it is going to be changing strictly over to the podcast the Overtime Network, or whether it will just have you automatically switch over. Today, we want to finish the discussion that we were having the other day about the WWE Women's Wrestling Division. We started off and did a whole show on Ronda Rousey. Today, we want to talk about Bianca Belair, we want to talk about Rhea Ripley, Liv Morgan, Bailey, Asuka, uh, Shayna Baszler. We're, we're going to be talking about a lot of the different women that make up the WWE roster. First of all, I want to start with Bianca Belair. Um... From what I am hearing from different sources, WrestleMania 38 management was over the top, extremely impressed with how this woman is carrying herself. In the last year, she has really grown. And since her call up about a year and a half ago to the main roster, she was considered what possibly was going to be a mid-card wrestler. Over that year and a half, through her Bailey program, then she went to a Sasha program, she went back to a Bailey program, had a very, very short program with Carmella, was supposed to have another Sasha program at SummerSlam, and it turned into the Becky program. When you work with three out of the four horsewomen and Carmella in your first year and a half, you are almost guaranteed success. And now WWE has totally changed their mind with what they have with Bianca Belair. She is considered to be a real star now. And Bianca Belair has given a lot of credit to a lot of different people. The women she's worked with, TJ Wilson, Fit Finley, and just different people that believed in her. Well, WWE management has taken notice of what she's pulled off with a lot of these great matches, and in especially WrestleMania. This was the second year in a row that she has pulled off a absolutely fabulous match. Possibly could be the match of the event for the second year in a row. Now, this is the second year in a row she's worked with one of the horsewomen, but... Um, I don't want to lobby on that, you know, and talk about that too much. There is a past podcast episode where we talk about that. Now, does this mean she's going to get a longer run with the Raw Women's Championship than she did with the SmackDown Women's Championship last year um no no i really don't think so not from what i'm hearing 
I think it's probably going to be about the same length of time as what she has been. And do I think that she's going to lose it at SummerSlam on July 30th? Yeah, it's a real uh, good possibility that she may do that. She has not been announced yet for the UK and European tour that they're going to be doing in August into September. I look for possibly a special match happening on that particular pay-per-view if Bianca Belair still has the belt. I am hearing that she probably won't. So let's kind of switch over to Rhea Ripley. Since she got out of her tag team with Nikki A.S.H., seems like she's been back on the fans' radar, especially with her development of this new tag team that they really threw together with, with Liv Morgan. We went from not having really a women's tag team division at all and Carmella and Queen Zelina not defending their belts, their titles, their championships for months, not being on, you know, a pay-per-view for almost over a year, to having a real tag division. If you saw they created one with Shayna Baszler and Natty, then we had Rhea and Liv Morgan, Sasha Banks and Naomi, and then you had Carmella Zelina, but they also had Waiting in the Wings, Dewdrop, and Nikki A.S.H. So they kind of just threw them together, not knowing whether or not this was going to be a kickoff show uh, match or whether the fans were really, really going to get behind this. With Sasha Banks' star power, and the month before that, Naomi's uh, run at Ronda Rousey and tag teaming with her, and then having matches against Charlotte Flair and Sonya Deville, Naomi really kind of came in to her own, almost. And because of that, she was partnered with Sasha Banks, and they blew up, basically. The fans have really taken to that particular tag team. So when they put Liv Morgan and Rhea Ripley together, they didn't know how that was going to work. They didn't know whether the fans were going to get behind it and what exactly was going to go down. Well, it also blew up. And their WrestleMania panel in Dallas, Texas, if, if you haven't, If you didn't attend and you haven't seen the video, I encourage you guys to look that video up. It was really interesting watching Liv and Rhea play off of each other, how they answered each other's questions. They looked like they were having so much fun. But it seems that WWE Creative really have had big plans for Rhea Ripley. We just talked about Bianca Belair and what the last year and a half has meant to her. A lot of people don't see that Rhea Ripley got the same kind of treatment. No, she didn't work with the Four Horsewomen and Carmella. But, guys, you've got to remember, she was working with the other Horsewomen meaning Charlotte Flair. Rhea Ripley, this is the longest stretch of her year and a half long career on the main roster that she hasn't had a championship. Now let me go ahead and repeat that in case you guys didn't quite get it. This is the longest 
that Rhea Ripley has went for the past year and a half that she has been on the main roster, that she has not held a championship. Think about that. Last WrestleMania 37, she, well, let's go back to January of last year, where she came in second to Bianca Belair at the Royal Rumble. There are some that still gripe and complain that Bianca Belair's feet actually hit the ground in that match and Rhea Ripley actually won. However, at WrestleMania 37, you saw Rhea Ripley also win her championship. She continued on with her program with... um, Charlotte Flair, and I believe she took on Asuka also, if I'm not mistaken. And you got to see her grow. She formed the tag team with Nikki A.S.H., and they quickly won the tag team championships. So Rhea here recently hasn't had a belt, but it's just the longest time that they haven't gave her one. So rumors started right before, I guess, WrestleMania, that Edge was going to be getting a new faction, a new uh, team, if you guys want to call it that, and that it was going to be called the Grand Jury, and that Rhea Ripley would be joining that team. If you guys noticed, approximately three to six months ago, the build-up into the Royal Rumble, you saw a lot of Beth Phoenix's comments about how impressed she was with Rhea Ripley when she was in NXT and also her since being called up to the main roster. Beth Phoenix, you saw Lita, you saw Trish Stratus all mention Rhea Ripley. Well, does it surprise you that Edge took notice of that? and that he started paying attention to Rhea Ripley once he got up on Raw. So, therefore, a decision was made when it was decided that Edge would create this faction with Damian Priest as kind of his second in command. But this is going to give Damian Priest a close-up look on how Edge goes about his business. They wanted to be different and add a woman. Well, Rhea Ripley, 26 years old, was picked for that spot. And so it was kind of threw into a little bit of a limbo when last week she missed Friday SmackDown and then last Monday Night's Raw and they didn't move that story along. It was said that Vince was unhappy and that he wanted someone to kind of be the intermediary, the fill-in, if you will, to take on Bianca Belair instead of Rhea Ripley. Now, since a week has gone by, he was really asked to change his mind and did after Rhea Ripley's performance that he saw on this past SmackDown. And even though Sonya Deville, now she's a Vince McMahon favorite and you need to be aware of that, is going to be taking on Bianca, you've got to realize that you're going to see Rhea Ripley join Edge and push Bianca Belair to her limits. She is next up for Bianca Belair. Now, I have to add the clarifier, which I think you hear from everyone, unless Vince McMahon changes his mind. Now, would I have liked to have seen Rhea Ripley and Liv Morgan keep their tag team? Yes. And it was brought up 
that Liv Morgan should possibly join Edge's faction too. It's my understanding that Bruce Pritchard kind of shot that down when a member of the creative staff brought up, hey, if you put Rhea and Liv in there, they can be the tag team. Well, it was kind of shot down. Everybody thinks that Liv Morgan makes an excellent baby face, and they're not real happy with her heel work. They really want Edge concentrating on Rhea. So I, I just don't think that that is going to happen. I think we're going to see a program between Rhea and Liv, which will be a nice kind of mid-card match to keep the women's division in the front and center. However, I think WWE is missing the boat. I don't think they understand what they have in the team of Liv Morgan and Rhea Ripley. But um, we'll have to wait and see if sometime in the future they end up putting those two back together. I think a heel Rhea Ripley is going to be unbelievable. I can't believe they missed that boat from the beginning. Um, I felt like last year she should have been a heel. However, I understand that she was going up against Charlotte Flair and nobody is considered a heel other than Charlotte Flair. Let's talk about Bailey and Asuka. No, no. They're not together as far as going to be a tag team. Although a lot of fans that I'm seeing up on Twitter would actually like that if it will get them on TV. It seems like everybody is writing me, what are you hearing about Bailey? Well, guys, it's always hard to find out what's up with Bailey because Number one, Bailey's so private. But number two, Bailey absolutely enjoys trolling. She enjoys trolling on social media, especially with Twitter. But guys, she also likes trolling the media and kind of giving opposite answers to what you think, putting out fake leads herself. She actually even gets friends of hers to put out fake leads. So we all saw last week how you had a person that came out on social media, did not have a reputation, a background, anything like that, and put out that Bailey and Becky Lynch were forming a tag team, and they credited Fightful. Well, you saw Sean Ross Sapp came out probably three hours later and immediately said, hey, that's not our story. Because WWE got back to him. He contacted them. They immediately got back to him because they did not want this story catching fire because they have no intentions of putting... Becky Lynch and Bailey together, they actually are going to be in a program against each other in the future. So I had never heard that. I hit up my sources at the same time. I'd never heard anyone say that there was even any discussion of Bailey and Becky being a tag team. But my comment was, if you're letting the four horsewoman kind of being pushed down the card a little bit, and you're not going to use them in the championship pitcher, then why not? Why not put them in a tag team? Um, it would be excellent, I think, to put them up against Sasha Banks and Naomi, I think we would have some bangers of matches. But what am I hearing about Bailey? Well, that WWE creative 
is arguing back and forth about whether Bailey needs to be a baby face or whether she needs to be a heel. And I know a lot of you are thinking, what? They've had months to decide this. Well, I totally agree with you. However, they don't seem to realize which show they want her on. She was supposed to come back to Raw. Now, I use the supposed to in quotes because I know so many of you were wanting to see her go back to SmackDown. And I'll get to that in a minute. So, she was going to go to Raw. It was my understanding that originally she was going to come back as a baby face and take on Becky. However, Becky hasn't became the heel that they thought she would become or really the heel Becky thought she would become. Now, she started getting there towards WrestleMania. But since Becky hasn't been back since then, they're not exactly sure. You fans out there seem to want to cheer Becky. So Bailey herself has said, let me come back as my heel character and take on Becky the babyface and then jump to Bianca. Are they going to allow her to do that? I'm hearing... Possibly that Bailey will be coming back as a heel on Raw to face Becky and then the lead up to Bianca Belair. But then a week and a half ago, I heard not only was Bailey wanting to come back as a heel, Bailey was wanting to come back on SmackDown. She likes the SmackDown schedule. Her best friend Sasha Banks is there, and that she really thought that a future program with Charlotte and with Rhonda would be excellent. And I know some of you, when you hear Rhonda, Charlotte, oh my gosh, Bailey's got to be a baby face. Well, I know a lot of you are really wanting her to come back as a baby face that you understand that she is the character you guys first fell in love with, that you first started following, and you started following her from NXT up to the main roster, and you really want her to go back to that. Then there are some guys out there that just want her to grow her hair back. Guys, her being a baby face doesn't mean she's growing her hair back. She could actually be a long-haired heel. Charlotte is like that now. However, I need to shoot it down. She would not be coming back as the hugger. Just like Alexa Bliss is not going to be coming back as the goddess. Yet, she's not going to be coming back also as the evil heel that she was with Lily the doll when they bring Alexa Bliss back. And I'm hearing that's going to be this coming Monday. She will actually be a combination. That's kind of what I'm hearing for Bailey. That if Bailey comes back as a baby face, it will be more of an obnoxious baby face. A little bit like her talk show host character, it will not be a full-fledged The Hugger. So if you're wanting a hug, mm, that doesn't mean that you're getting it unless you're a kid. Now, we all know even the heel Bailey hugged kids. Seems like the real-life person in Bailey can't resist a kid. But, see, Nick Khan is maybe the deciding factor in this. 
And some of you are saying, what do you mean? Well, Nick Khan was brought on to revive and make WWE as much money as possible. Well, he wants Bailey, the merchandise pusher, back. Well, he really enjoys that Bailey was making money hand over fist, basically, for them consistently as the hugger. She was pushing cups, foam fingers, headbands, shirts, like crazy. Well, Nick Khan saw what they did with Becky, who was over with the fans, but they brought her back as a heel, and the fans really didn't like that. It is suspected that the fans are going to be popping for Bailey's comeback from her knee surgery and that they want to capitalize on this. So you may be seeing Bailey come back to SmackDown as a baby face. But we need to throw in a wrench in this. Bailey herself is not even sure about this. But the person that's the deciding factor, Vince McMahon himself, is not sure of this. See, you've got to remember, Bailey went to Vince's office herself about the character change. She even asked him about cutting her hair. Vince McMahon had to approve that. Vince has really patted himself on the back, especially during the pandemic, because he suggested little things to Bailey, and he really praised her for realizing that her character was stale and that she needed to turn heel. Bailey believes that it may be too soon to go back baby face. Now, Bailey's way more positive with her life now, but she has continued being a heel. She absolutely loves it. She loves um, actually getting on to social media and continuing her heelish comments to not only the fans, but different WWE superstars. Uh, you saw her, if you follow her, making comments about Tamina's wedding dress. Um, I know that this is a big debate. But I can also tell you what is also going on. And the rumor that I'm hearing about Bailey is she will not be back until Backlash or the Raw after Backlash. So I don't think a decision is being made. Is my understanding that she is showing up at both Raw and SmackDown um, occasionally to find out if they have anything for her. Asuka. What's going on with Asuka? Well, guys, I can report that last night on Raw, Asuka wasn't even there. They told her they didn't have anything for her. There was no point in her coming to Buffalo. I truly believe that when my sources are saying that they don't know what to do with her, I think that is 100% true. I think they have no idea what to do with Asuka. Now, what do we do about that? You can get Asuka trending maybe, but I just, I don't know what they're going to do. I know a lot of you out there want to see her in a tag team. I don't know that that 
is, you know, necessarily what they're going to do. Some of you have been writing me about Raquel. Raquel Gonzalez, of course, two weeks ago got her name changed to Raquel uh, Rodriguez and that she has been brought up to the SmackDown roster. I know a lot of you did not like that while she was there, she turned down the Los Lotharios kisses, but they thought that would signify that she was going to be a baby face. And then with her intro to Natty, where she introduced herself, Natty, you know, talked to her and was kind of being almost borderline rude. We got to see also Raquel kind of be a baby face character. I don't know whether I'm going to like that or not. I kind of liked her more as a heel along the lines as I always have liked Rhea Ripley as a heel. We'll have to wait and see what they actually do uh, with Raquel on SmackDown. I think she's going to have a long-term impact. She's six feet tall. Charlotte's 5'10". I'm hearing rumors that Raquel versus Charlotte is being pitched and being pitched right now. However, there are a lot in the creative room that would like to see Raquel go up against um, maybe some mid-carters first, establish herself, and then not throw her immediately into the title pitcher. Guys, with Lacey Evans also coming back on SmackDown as a baby face, this is why when I was talking about Bailey, you didn't hear me talking a lot about her being on SmackDown. I know she wants to be there because of Sasha Banks and because she likes that schedule better. However, I really, really, when you sit down and look at what they've done so far, can't see them using Bailey on SmackDown. I look for Bailey to be on Raw. I look for Raquel and Lacey to be taking on Charlotte, possibly even Rhonda. As I told you in a previous podcast episode, look for Rhonda and Shayna Baszler to create a tag team and go take the tag team belts, possibly off Sasha Banks and Naomi. Um, as far as Asuka, I really do think it's going to be a complete and total toss-up on what happens with them. So guys, um, I'm going to go ahead and cut this one right around, you know, half an hour or so. I don't want to take up too much of your time. You guys know that I really like to keep these under 45 minutes. Our next podcast episode probably will be on AEW. I'm going to talk John Moxley. I want to talk about the four pillars that or AEW actually said were four pillars, what they are doing with them and how they are now becoming champions. They are now on TV every week. And let's talk about the next four pillars. And that includes their women's division. We're going to be talking some about that. I look forward to talking to you guys, though, soon. You guys know, as always, if you have any questions, comments, problems, or protests, you need to write me at prowrestlingot at gmail.com. Or my Twitter handle is prowrestling, or excuse me, proovertime. That's two O's, proovertime. Guys, I, I want to encourage you to stop by theovertimenetwork.com. We're putting out weekly, but looking at putting out more frequent pro wrestling stories. As always, you can find your daily sports bets over there and the breakdowns of those. So that is 
the Overtime Network. Guys, I'm I uh, like I said, I look forward to talking to you guys soon and give me some feedback on how you like the Overtime Network podcast. And I'll be talking to you guys soon. And hopefully I will see you somewhere down the road.